Hi everyone and welcome to tips on how to strengthen your immune system and balance your chakras. My name is Claire Whetstone Prudholm and I am the master trainer with Water Art and probably been with Auto Water Art since the beginning of this time. And I want to welcome you to Champaign, Illinois, which is situated in the center of the state of Illinois. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Besides being a master trainer, I'm also a licensed massage therapist, a healing touch certified practitioner, a shamanic practitioner, a Reiki master, and I've studied many forms of energy work, including uh, Donna Eden's energy medicine. I've also studied many forms of meditation, art of living meditation, transcendental meditation, and mindful meditation. And you're probably wondering, okay, what's the heck is she talking about that she has to brag about herself? Well, that's not the intention here that I'm trying to brag about myself. The reason I even mention all of those things is so that you know where I'm coming from with this whole presentation today, especially since this presentation is out of the realm of what we're doing here. Mostly everything is about water and how to do water exercises or land exercises. And here I come talking about the immune system. Well, the reason I even thought about this was I really thought during this period of COVID-19 and where we're all trying really hard to keep ourselves really healthy, what can we do to make ourselves feel better? And I came up with this idea of talking about our energy systems and how to um, boost them. Um, these techniques are really are emerge and came from many, many of the uh, techniques that I just had mentioned before, the, the Reiki, the shamanic, the healing touch and so forth. And from them, I took what I thought was the best things that helped me to feel better, boost my energy and uh, just feel overall healthier. So when you are watching these uh, routines and techniques, I want you to know that it is wholeness, it is probably the best way of doing it. Because the more often you do it and you follow through the routine, you are going to start to feel better. But if that's not what you wanna do, you can take little techniques from here and just work, have a mini little thing that's just gonna boost you and make you feel better. I use many of these techniques when I'm actually teaching my water class. Some of the techniques I use in the beginning of the class, when I really want people to become centered and ready to have to do the exercises that we're going to do and be, part, be able to make it through the whole class. And then I also use some of the techniques at the end of the class when I really want people to become very grounded and get ready to go out and um, do their day and feel pretty healthy and energized. So know that you don't have to stick so closely to this whole program. So one of the things I wanted to tell you about is um, about the time that COVID became, like in March when everybody was going into shutdown, I had just taken a trip with my husband to go to California. We took quite a long route through Dallas and into Arizona and then over to California to San Diego. Well, during that trip, I wasn't feeling that great. I was getting a lot of coughs and I was getting really tired. And by the time we got to San Diego, we got told that the shutdown up in San Francisco was in place and that we couldn't go up and see the rest of our families. So we hightailed it back to Illinois. So we felt a little bit more protected. Well, I was pretty fatigued, pretty exhausted, um, really tired, had a cough had a sore throat and I thought, oh my gosh, I hope I don't have COVID. Well, I did not, but I was just really worn out. And then I realized I hadn't been doing my daily routine or balancing my chakras. So I thought, okay, I better get back on to doing this. So I start every morning, I got up, took my shower and while I was in my shower, I began to do my routine. And this routine really changed me around. I started feeling a lot, lot better. So I'm hoping that when you do this routine, you will find that it makes a difference for you as well. Um, I hope that also some of these uh, techniques you'll be able to use in your water classes and they will help you and your participants to feel better and healthier. So with that, I thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of this program. Have you ever considered that there's more to our body than just the physical aspects? 
From our understanding of quantum physics, we now believe that our body has an electromagnetic field and energy centers or subtle bodies that extend beyond our skin. This is the human energy system, which is made up of subtle bodies, auras, chakras, meridians, hara, and many other systems. The story of the human energy system is much more complex than what is going to be presented today. The Western world is not unique in studying the human energy system. In fact, we are pretty new to understanding it. Many cultures have worked with these human energy systems for thousands of years from our Eastern cultures in India, Egypt, China, and even our indigenous cultures of Africa, Australia, and North America. Today, I'm briefly going to explain the importance of these subtle bodies to help you understand how to balance, center, and support your immune system. In fact, all the human energy systems for better health. Because of COVID-19, we are seeing so much more in the media where they're talking about the immune system and how it should be supported. We're also hearing it from our doctors. They're looking at telling us to watch your weight, to watch your diet, to stop smoking, to um, drink more water, to get adequate sleep, try taking vitamins like vitamin C, D, and zinc, um, to wear our masks, wash our hands. All of these are really great techniques and things that really do help support us in our immune system. But my question to you is, what are we doing if we're still, after all of these things, feeling fatigued and run down and feel like we need a boost? Well, let's carry on with this program and let me tell you what I think we can do. Our immune system is a complex and pervasive network of cells, tissues, and organs. Simply, its main function is to fight disease-causing germs like bacteria, viruses like the coronavirus, parasites, and fungi, and remove them from our body. Most of us are familiar with our physical body and its functions, but often we are less aware of our body's subtle energies. From an energetic perspective, we are made up of layers of vibrating energy, each with its own specific vibration and purpose. Our energetic layers, energetic points, and subtle bodies create an interconnected field of energy around the physical body that is commonly known as the auric or the luminous field. It is a field that is critical for our survival. It is one of the reasons that we are able to hold together as intact humans. In fact, all living objects have an aura. Our aura connects into the physical body via energy points or chakras, which directs the energy into the physical body via the meridian system. The auric or the luminous field is often described as light emanating from the body or force field or universal energy. It is like a halo or donuts surrounding and protecting our physical body. It extends out from our body a few feet in all directions. We cannot see our auric field with our physical eye, but it can be seen through the third eye, the area between our eyebrows and Karelian photography. The aura serves basically two functions. One, to help keep harmful energies away from the body, and two, to bring harmonious energies into our body. Our aura filters and screens harmful energies which protect us from the undesirable physical, emotional, psychic energies in our environment. The energy layers within the auric field connect to the seven chakras and affect our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. These layers vibrate at different frequencies. For example, our spiritual needs have a high vibration, where our material needs have a low frequency. 
The first energy field is the etheric, which is closest to our physical body. It protects, identifies, and solidifies our physical awareness. It relates to the first chakra root. The second energy field is emotional. It is the feeling body, connects our events, experiences, our people outside triggering our feelings. It relates to the second chakra, sacral. The third energy field is the mental, contains our thought patterns mental and mental processes. It relates to the third chakra, solar plexus. The fourth through seventh energy field is within the spiritual field, which is the furthest out. Here resides our spirit and highest consciousness linking our collective consciousness together. Within the spiritual level are the astral, etheric, template, the celestial and cathartic bodies, which relate to the fourth to seventh chakra, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Chakras are subtle energy points. In Sanskrit, they call them spinning vortex of life, or also wheels of light. They act as energy gateways or energy exchange points. There are seven major chakras and many minor ones, which connect etherically into the spinal column and head. They regulate, maintain, and manage the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual aspects of our being on the physical plane. Each chakra plays a specific role in supporting and governing the functions of each physical body and its organs. The chakras have a spinning mechanism which moves energy in and out of the body the physical body is dependent upon this flow to maintain optimal well-being. However, chakras can become blocked by long-held negative states like rigid patterns, negative emotions, toxins, or other outside influences. It is important to keep the chakras open and the energy flowing. The more energy flows, the healthier we are. Imbalance of energy or blocked energy flows caused by negative thoughts, fears, and stresses lead to disease. Meridians are pathways that deliver energy throughout the body. There are a total of 26 meridians, or 12 pairs and two central line meridians, mirroring each other on opposite sides of the body. Some travel up the body and some down. They run along the surface of the skin and deep into the body where it brings energy to one or more of our organs. Meridians bridge the mind, body, and spirit. One of the most important meridians is the triple warmer. It is perhaps the most important of all the meridians since its major responsibility is to keep us alive. It controls our fight, flight, or freeze response. It impacts our immune system and our ability to manage stress. When it is activated, the body is on high alert. The heart is another subtle body. It resides more on a dimensional plane than a physical plane. It appears as a tube. It is the source of the body's energy. It is a main line that feeds our entire body and vital for our health and well-being. The hara enters our body from the top of our head, the crown, and travels down through the body, deep into the earth, and then back up again. If the hara is compromised, energy can leak out. As problems come into our lives, they enter our body, first through the spiritual layer of the auric field, progressing inward until they arrive into our physical body. First, it is a spiritual problem, and then moves to a mental, emotional, and if not cleared out, into our physical body as disease or illness. Problems leave the body in reverse. First, you cure it on a physical level, then heal the emotional, mental, and spiritual for complete healing. Otherwise, the problem will return again to the body and may appear in another part unless all the layers are healed. Chakras are located along this line and they represent aspects of ourselves. Survival, self-esteem, ability to express, 
intuition, imagination, creativity, and decision making, for example. If they spin erratically, they will compromise the integrity of the Hara. Therefore, it's important for us to be aware of our body, our emotions, our responses, our relationships, and the nature of our health through exercise, diet, attitude, thoughts. So our overall essence and immune system is not compromised and we stay healthy, strong, and whole. Energy needs space to move, otherwise it becomes blocked or constricted from prolonged stress, muscular contractions, toxins, or from other people. In our everyday life, as we become more stressed, our body begins to constrict and gets tighter over time, to the point that there is no room to move freely. When this happens, our energies no longer function effectively. The result is pain, discomfort, emotional imbalances, and illness, which lead to disease. Since all our subtle bodies are interconnected, the health of our chakras, meridians, aura, hara, need energy flowing well and being balanced. This determines how healthy we are and our immune systems are. The good news is that energy patterns can be repatterned, producing more flow and balance. Hi everyone. Well, we're at the point where we're going to learn how to do the chakra balancing and the daily routine. This routine and balancing really does help strengthen and boost your system. And I personally do it every day for, and it only takes me 10 minutes to do it in the shower. There's a few things I want to show you before we begin. At the beginning of clearing the chakras, I'm going to tell you to put your hand on your sacrum back where your tailbone is, and you're going to move the chakras in a counterclockwise. You take your other hand and you bring it close to your root or the first chakra, which is about three to four inches apart, and you go counterclockwise and you move on each and every one of the chakras. I'm kind of going quickly here just to give you an idea. Later in the routine, I'm going to again ask you to put your hand back on your sacrum and this time you're going to energize those chakras and we're going to go clockwise from start at the root and you're going to move very quickly up the body and energize each and every one of those chakras. So I would be really great if you all would join me, get up and watch this video as uh, I demonstrate how to balance your chakras and do the daily routine. Step one, clearing and cleansing the chakras. The first chakra is the root. The color is red. It relates to survival to live and governs the kidney. The second chakra is the sacral. The color is orange. It relates to creativity, decision-making, procreation, and governs the reproductive system. The third chakra is the solar plexus. The color is yellow and relates to self-esteem, gut instinct, and it governs the pancreas. The fourth chakra is the heart. Its color is green, which bridges our physical and spiritual body. It is love and connection to others. It governs the thymus. The fifth chakra is the throat. The color is blue. It relates to verbal and creative expression, speech and it governs the thyroid and parathyroid. The sixth chakra is the third eye between the eyebrows. The color is indigo. It relates to intuition, wisdom, imagination, perception, and governs the hypothymus and pituitary gland. The seventh chakra is the crown. Its color is violet or white. It is the integration of all, where the soul and spirit connect. It governs the pineal gland. Step two, aligning the hara. Draw a line from your abdomen between your navel and the pubic down deeply into the earth and ground. The other hand goes up from your heart to the heavens connecting to the above world. Pull the energies from the heaven and up from the earth to the heart center, bringing them together. From here, I set my intentions and release them out into my field. Step three, raking and scrubbing the auric field. I rake using my 
hands slowly sweeping down my body from the top of my head to my feet and back up again to the top of my head. This dislodges any toxins or debris of the field. I scrub my hairline line up and down the center of my body and across each side making an X. Step four, balancing, charging, stabilizing, and energizing the chakras. Now I put my hand back on my sacrum and go back to the first chakra and start spinning it clockwise three or four times, moving quickly up all seven chakras. A clean chakra can draw natural energy in to replenish the reserves in the auric field and keep us healthy. Step five, shield and protect the body. I envision placing copper and gold ribbons from the center of my head to the bottom of my feet. The shield protects, supports, and holds everything in place. Copper conducts energy to amplify healing and de-stressing. Gold protects us from energy, negative energies and can bring happiness and peace. Express your gratitude. Say thank you for something in your life. Be specific. Repeat two times. This centers and grounds you, clears old energies, and makes space for new energy. Separating anger and worry. Repeat two times on each side, concentrating on and releasing an intention. It expels toxic energy, releases emotions, great for relieving sore and achy joints, and helps reduce insomnia. Weaving figure eight. Strengthens the energy field and clears the aura, protects you from harmful energies, grounds, and centers you. A cross crawl, repeat 20 to 30 times, improves balance and enhances coordination, clears thinking to help you focus, balances left and right brain function, and helps with chronic exhaustion and depression. Cro brain crossover Tibetan prayer pose. Hold the pose for three breaths. Then repeat on the other side. This helps with grounding, centering, and calming, corrects scrambled energy, and reduces left and right confusion. Steeple hands and crown pull. For the steeple hands, think about moving energy from above as you inhale and as you exhale, the energy moves through your fingers, to your palms, to your thumbs, and into the brain. Repeat three times. It untangles the inner chaos, helps you think clearly, and learn more easily. The crown pull is the headache massage. Stretch the skin on the forehead, top of the head, back of the head, and on the neck to the shoulders. This clears mental energy and brain fog, sharpens the memory, and releases negative thoughts. The triple warmer smoothie. Start outside the eyebrow, circle around the ear, down the back of the arm, over the elbow, down the forearm, off the fourth finger, and repeat three times on each side. This is the meridian that controls flight and fight response and helps you when we are overwhelmed or angry. We run it backwards to calm our system down after a flight, fight, or freeze response. Four thumbs. They all increase strength and vitality and boost and strengthen the immune system. It is a quick energy boost by itself. Tap each other 15 to 20 times. Tap the cheekbones. It brings down energy to your legs and helps to be grounded and centered. Great for improving your skin tone. K27. This is if you're feeling drowsy and lack energy or tired easily and are having trouble concentrating and focusing. The thymus thump, the Tarzan spot. This reduces fatigue and boosts your energy. It reduces stress and fever and increases T cells and white blood count. It helps when you feel low energy, tired, or just received a shocking news. The spleen point. It provides an energy lift, strengthens the immune system, helps to metabolize and detox the lymphatic system, 
and used when you need to gain control and get centered. The immune massage or neural lymphatic massage. Massage wherever there's a tender point. For example, rub along the collarbone out to the armpit on both sides, energizes you and sends stagnant energy and toxins to the lymphatic system for removal. Hook up, place the middle finger of one hand in the navel and middle finger of the other hand on your third eye. Press into skin and with each finger pull up, hold for at least 12 to 30 seconds or longer. This calms the nervous system when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed, helps with insomnia, helps feel connected with others, increases coordination. Nine hearts and zip up. You will draw three hearts around each, your face, torso, and body. This is to increase joy, and self-esteem and strengthen your aura. Zip up three times to lock in positive energies. This will boost confidence, lift your spirits and energies, clear your thoughts and create a strong protective field around you. Another way to improve our overall immune health is through meditation. Meditation is simply the art of sitting and listening to our body. It is a mental form of yoga where we silence our thought process and arrive at the source of thought. According to Deepak Chopra of the Chopra Institute, we expand awareness to the field of infinite possibilities or pure potentiality. We open to new insights and ideas. The immune system is one of the most critical and most fascinating aspects of our mind-body connection. In the 1980s, it was discovered that the immune system had a high intelligence because of the chemical messages in the immune cells and their ability to send messages throughout the body. This means our thoughts, moods, sensations, and expectations are transmitted to our immune cells. When you meditate, these messages are changed in important ways. The immune system responds to both negative and positive thoughts. Meditation creates a positive mental environment which help reduce and slow down the CD4 cell count, which is associated with keeping viruses from spreading. Meditation benefits our immune system and our overall body by boosting antibodies, reducing production of stress hormones, including cortisol and adrenaline, it improves the immune function by increasing electrical activity in the prefrontal cortex, hippocampus, and any part that controls positive emotions, awareness, and anxiety. It helps decrease blood pressure and hypertension. It lowers cholesterol levels. It decreases anxiety, depression, and insomnia, and helps reduce burnout and stress. In fact, it enhances our concentration, memory, and our ability to learn, and it improves our creativity and problem-solving skills. Overall, it gives us a sense of calm and inner peace. This is a great time for all of us during this conference to take a few minutes from sitting at the computer and watching today's wonderful programs and presenters. Let's give ourselves a few minutes to relax and replenish ourselves before we carry on with the rest of the conference. I would like you to join me in a meditation for the next few minutes. Find a comfortable place to sit quietly. If you're sitting in a chair, have your feet flat and balanced on the floor. Sit tall with your sacrum close to the back of the chair. If you're on the floor or on a cushion, your legs should be folded comfortably in front of you. It's best to have your knees not higher than your hips, so you may want to place a cushion tucked under your buttocks so you tilt slightly forward. Have your torso upright, erect, but not rigid. 
and your shoulders relaxed back and down and not hunched. This leaves the heart wide open and allows you to feel into your heart center. Your hands can be on your thighs with the palms up or down. Your jaw is slightly open so it's relaxed. And now we're going to close our eyes and slowly take a deep breath in. Begin to observe the breath as it passes easily through your nose and your mouth. And exhale. Take a deep breath again through your nose and out through your mouth. And allow your body to relax and notice how it feels. Take another slow, deep breath in through your nose as you become more centered and relax, and then exhale out through your mouth. And now just allow yourself to breathe normally. Notice your breath and experience the breath. It is just a sensation. Hold on to the breath because if you try, you will probably suffocate. It's this sensation that rises, it is experience, and then it subsides. This is the nature of, of all experience. An experience is a sensation or a perception, an image, a feeling, or a thought that rises in your awareness and made from your awareness. Just allow the breath to rise and subside in what we call now. We need just to observe the experience and then let it go. We cannot hold on to them because if we try to hold on to these experiences, we will be clinging and grasping that quality is very similar to suffocating. If we let them go, it is freedom. So just let your thoughts easily come and go. If your mind wanders, the breath serves as a home base which you can easily come back to. As you observe your breath, bring your awareness into your heart and ask this question, what are you grateful for? Have you ever noticed when you are grateful, you are more open, generous, connected, aware, and alive? Everything within you and around you changes and new energy flows when you're grateful. Now let's think of our immune system. Let's recognize and appreciate its complexity and how efficient and powerful it is. The immune system knows exactly what it's doing and how to keep us healthy and well. Every cell in your body is vibrating with energy and health. All your body systems are functioning perfectly. It is doing the most fantastic job protecting you from all of the viruses and bacteria, and especially COVID-19 during this pandemic. Say to yourself, I am so grateful for my wonderful immune system, for fighting off all challenges and threats easily and effectively. Tell yourself that you're deeply and completely love, accept, and thank any amazing immune 
immune system. Thank your immune system for everything you do, it does for you. As we prepare to meditate together, let's take a moment to consider our centering thought. All good things bring gratitude. All good things bring gratitude. Now let's prepare for our meditation. Stay aware of your breath. Keep breathing slowly. Allowing your body to become more and more relaxed. Now we'd like you to now gently introduce a mantra. I am grateful. My immune system is strong. Repeat this mantra to yourself silently. I am grateful. My immune system is strong. If your thoughts are wandering, gently and easily repeat the mantra. I am grateful. My immune system is strong. I am grateful. My immune system is strong. Please continue with your meditation. I will mind the time, and when it's time to end, you will hear me ring a soft bell. I am grateful. My immune system is strong. I am grateful. My immune system is strong.
is time to release the mantra. Continue to keep your eyes closed, but inhale and exhale softly. When you are ready, you can open your eyes. And as you continue with the conference, remember, all good things bring gratitude. Your immune system is strong. Thank you for joining me today. Stay safe, healthy, and strong. Namaste.